The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everybody. This is Ruby at Haystack. Uh, just a reminder that you can uh, use the chat in GoToWebinar if you want your line unmuted. And I'll hand it over to Cheryl. Hi, everybody. It's Cheryl. I'm going to um, just remind everybody, too, that we'll be back channeling in Chatsy. And um, you are probably very familiar with our guests today, Carla Casilli and Sunny Lee from Mozilla are going to talk about the Chicago Summer of Learning. I hope everybody got a chance to read through the recommended reading about what went on this summer. It is impressive. So I look forward to hearing more and I'm going to throw over to Carla and Sunny. Great. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Um, so I realize that I'm already starting beyond where I want to on this. Huh, there we go. So thanks, everybody, for attending the call. And as Cheryl noted, we are going to be talking through some of the work that we did for the Chicago Summer of Learning. And during this presentation, we're actually going to be talking about kind of the badge system design, the thinking that went into that, um, kind of giving an overall perspective of the length of time. And what I've done is develop a series of images that we that will show some of the work that we did based on some of the numbers um, that we're, we were working with. So it's a little bit tongue in cheek. And then Sunny will be following up and talking about some of the tools that we developed for the summer, specifically for Chicago, but can, that can also benefit the larger, the group at large. So the Chicago Summer of Learning um, was actually aimed at one summer for eight weeks. And the goal there was to uh, make sure that it captured and addressed the summer learning drop-off. So our, there was really kind of one primary focus. And as I step through this idea, I'm going to talk to you about how many people were involved and what was the work that we took on versus work that happened external to Mozilla. So really addressing the summer drop-off, summer learning drop-off. Um, there were five organizing principles that what went into our bad system design and it was STEAM. So science, technology, engineering, art, and math were kind of the five primary goals that we were aiming to address during the summer. So the summer learning drop-off addressed STEAM. There were over 100 organizations and kind of three core team members who worked through all of this and Sunny and, and I were two of those core team members. And then there were, and I mentioned core team here, and I'm just talking about the bad system design work, not the techno, technical work. So there's a larger, much larger team when it comes to the, the technical implementation. But just kind of sorting through and working on a day-to-day -day basis with 100 organizations, which was a huge undertaking, um, especially since we were aiming to have this all done for an eight-week period. Now, we actually had many months where we were working on things, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a bit. So, so this is the, pretty much the, hey, we, got, we have all this information, now go develop a badge system and go do something that people are going to be using and can make use of and will be beneficial to everybody. So this was kind of our imperative was make this happen in a really short time frame and make sure it's effective because we had many people that we had talked to leading up to the summer kickoff that said, hey, we're really looking at Chicago as kind of a proof point and we would like to see what happens during that summer and see um, who might be participating and what kind of badges might come out of that. And we did have some initial concern about people. I and mean, it was very interesting in, in some of the social network channels where people responded thinking that this is kind of a, um, a difficult scenario that we had gotten ourselves into. But in fact, in some ways, it was the best possible scenario because well, it was the city of Chicago is their first foray. They're the, 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 the I think, believe the second or third, a very large city, one of the largest cities in the U.S. Them to undertake this was kind of massive, but they weren't doing it in the, you know, in a in a blindfolded fashion. In fact, we were handholding them throughout most of this. So, it, for them to undertake it and think through and have all these different organizations with, without any kind of organizations such as Mozilla or Haystack to help. Then, then I think that would have been a kind of a nightmare scenario. But instead, this was really a wonderful opportunity for us to try out a bunch of different hypotheses. So here we are. We're thinking, okay, we're going, um, and this is the this is what we're aiming for. And, and I'm sure you've seen this graphic before. This kind of this is the overall ecosystem that there are issuers and there are badges and there's the earner at the center and there's a backpack and then there are display sites. 
And our goal was to do pretty much all of this in a summer. So um, the top level is where we were working with badge issuers. Obviously, there were hundreds of badges that came out of this. We were always thinking about the earner, and the earners really were um, essentially Chicago uh, students and youth between the ages of, I believe, like 6 to 25. Uh, with the majority kind of slotting into between the ages of 13 to 18. So we're thinking this all the time. This is kind of what's going on in the back of our heads. How can we make this work? Um, sometimes it felt like we were really distanced from this, this concept, and sometimes it felt like, man, we're really making this happen, and it's a wonderful experience. Um, so what we did was actually create kind of one entry-level org spreadsheet, um, and prior to this, we actually had a number of different conversations. We had some face-to-face -face interactions with organizations to let them know what was happening during the summer and who they could um, interact with and who might be useful for them to reference at a later time. Uh, and then we developed a series of spreadsheets. Now, this spreadsheet was something that led to much confusion. So one thing that we're going to be talking about during this webinar today is where we had some fantastic successes and where we ran into some um, areas that we could use work on. I would say that this spreadsheet is one of those areas that we could possibly use work on. Um, and here you'll see the amazing Sunny actually went through. This is a screenshot that's showing we had a spreadsheet of spreadsheets at one point. <laughs> So each one of those uh, listed in that column B that you're seeing on this was actually an another spreadsheet that was a personalized spreadsheet. So we went ahead and sent every organization, every, every entry level organization, their individual spreadsheet that they had to complete. And on those spreadsheets, we asked them questions like, what's the badge name? What's the goal of this badge? How will this learning be assessed? Does this align with any standards? So we had a series of prompts on each one of these spreadsheets that people then completed. Um, let's just say that that was a really interesting prospect to try to undertake with over 100 organizations. And you can actually see some of these are lined through where they actually pulled out at the last minute. So we were also working with organizations who were being brought on and then organizations who are realizing that they may not have received funding in order to carry on their program during the summer, so that then they were pulled out. Um, and this is actually a screenshot showing you that we used Zendesk. So we actually had hundreds of questions that we were responding to weekly. Um, pretty much daily conversations coming through, people asking us, hey, I don't understand this portion, or hey, I've, I've actually completed my spreadsheet, how does it look to you? I've completed the content portion of my spreadsheet. And uh, we would go in and review. And when I say review, we actually went through every single line on every spreadsheet. And personally, I personally reviewed every badge that actually was issued during the summer. And it was a massive undertaking from that standpoint. But this was a really fantastic way for us to make sure that we were hearing the, the considerations that were happening from any of the people who were interacting. And it allowed us to have direct contact. So from that, we developed one massive canonical spreadsheet with eight loaded tabs. And the next screenshot is actually, um, you'll see what one page, what like one portion of that page looked like. So you can see how we started to think through it. Um, and so in this instance, you can see that there are columns for organization name, for badge name, for badge description, for criteria, for proposed criteria, and this is again, this is just a, this is a, this is a window into how this is an extremely wide spreadsheet and an also an extremely deep spreadsheet. So you can see at the bottom of this page um, of this screenshot, you can see that we had it broken it down into A through E, F through J, K through O, P through T, U through Z. Then we had these things called self-paced activities that I'll talk about in a little bit. And there was a game associated with this. And then there was one organization who was kind of a very large organization, After School Matters, that we were treating in a somewhat different manner because they had so much outreach. They had so much reach that they could address many different people during the summer. And they also funded a number of organizations who were issuing badges during the summer. So this was something that we worked on pretty much daily. And um, there were three types of badges that we were considering within this context. So we didn't ask the organizations to consider what kind of badges these were. That was something that Mozilla actually went through and looked at every single badge and made a decision about what type of badge it was. 
And the reason that we did this was because there was essentially a hierarchy or a weight to the badges, and that weight fed into how the badge system worked. So the badge system actually took into account whether or not you had a certain number of skill badges or achievement badges and participation badges in a perfect world would have counted, but in this instance, they did not. So we had about six weeks of reviewing and rationalizing all of this content. Um, and during that time, I can say that the team, I'm sure, had countless fitful dreams because there was so, it was quite an intense process because we were essentially reviewing at the same time that we were responding to confusion or concern coming through from Zendesk. And we also were making sure that the content that was being created was making sense as well. So all of the content was being reviewed. And then we also, and I'll discuss this in a little bit, we also reviewed and created a template for the visual design. But we'll get to that in a second. So the reason that I have this right after I have the six weeks reviewing is that we actually were essentially going into what would have been the criteria, the metadata for the criteria and rationalizing this. So recognizing that the city of Chicago needed a cohesive front, what we did was go in and create a series, actually one kind of specific template in this instance, a content template that we then went in and cleaned up all of the criteria from every one of the organizations, I mean, every one of the entry level organizations so that all of the criteria read in a similar fashion. And what that did was that we had a few benefits from that. It served to reinforce that this was one coming, everything was coming out of the city of Chicago and that it also served to reinforce a kind of sense of family quality. And it provided a template in the future for people as they started to think about um, organizations who may not have ever issued badges before. Oh, this is actually something, this is a good way for me to talk about what it is my program does. Because I'm sure, as you all know, sometimes you have these fantastic programs and the city of Chicago does have some tremendous summer programs going and they may not be really good at talking about it. So what we wanted to do was ensure that the criteria was written in the best possible light. It highlighted the best possible things coming out of each program. And believe it or not, we're still, that's still a little bit ongoing. So it's been a very long process rationalizing the criteria. Um, I mentioned this a little earlier, but we really had one visual design template. And the thinking behind this was that recognizing that um, there were a lot of organizations who were new to the concept of badging, we wanted to ensure that there was an overall visual line. So it was a, a sense of group groupness that uh, people could see automatically when they looked at a badge. So if a badge were taken out of context, if it were viewed from, let's say, on somewhere else, then you would know immediately that it was a Chicago Summer of Learning badge. And uh, what that did was also put parameters around what was possible, which meant that people could be much more creative than they might typically be, especially for organizations that did not necessarily have access to creative professionals like designers. So we created a tool that I'm sure Sunny will be talking about in just a few minutes um, that allowed that to happen called Bad Studio. And this is the basic template that we used for all of what we call the entry level badges. And I'll explain entry level in a little bit as well. And the goal here was to, again, create that family sense, but also to reference the city of Chicago. So the banner that you see at the bottom of this template is actually makes direct reference to the city of Chicago's flag. And so that was the overall overarching theme there that there was a badge and then you had this kind of nice reference back, this ribbon effect that was referencing, oh, this is coming directly from the city of Chicago. Um, the beauty of this template also arises from the fact that should, you know, when the next year, when the city of Chicago has a summer of learning 2014, they might repurpose this, but they can then also use perhaps the banner um, to then repeat that overall sense of family. So they may not choose to use a hexagonal uh, graphic, but they may choose to repeat the banner. And so what we were thinking too is, is kind of long-term thinking, not only from um, this is happening during the summer and then it's the end, but instead this is the beginning of a process and this is the beginning of a system. How can we make sure that the system has legs and will last and will be useful over time? Kudos to Jess Klein because she's actually the person who's designed this template. And, uh, and it was really useful and effective because lots of organizations had concerns about developing 
um, the visual design because they had already been stepped through the process of content design by the time they got to visual design. And again, that was another conscious decision to keep them to content before um, having organizations start to worry about, oh my gosh, we don't have a designer, how will this come into being? So that was um, a, a, an interesting learning point for us. Uh, again, a decision point and a learning point about the city of Chicago, the summer of learning. Here on this image, you'll get to see this is some, these are some representations. Now, obviously, we had hundreds of badges, and this is just one screenshot, um, that one small capture of the number of badges that were created. But you can see exactly how different these badges looked from one another, and yet they still maintain that sense of cohesiveness, that kind of a brand effect for the Chicago Summer of Learning. Um, the other thing that I love about this shot is that it allows you to see that there are families of, of visuals that are happening as well. So some organizations like the, um, the Garfield Park Conservatory, what they were doing was they were just essentially shifting color to show that there were two different kinds of badges, one for culture and one for edibles. Um, and then the other organizations that you see on there that you can see that there's a certain kind of sense of familiarity of one to the next. Um, and those are all coming from the same organization as well. One thing to note that we did warn people against a little bit of including type on their badges because they need to be seen at a relatively small size. And, and as you start to think through your badge system design, it's really worthwhile considering how things might work from a mobile perspective and how small things might get when they move to mobile. So you, while you can see it here pretty beautifully, it is, some, it is a consideration as you move forward thinking about badge system design. Um, and moving to the next idea is there were different levels to this badge progression, the badge pathways, and again, Just Klein designed some really beautiful city level badges, um, starting to acknowledge those five main categories. So science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And then there were additional two additional badges. And here you'll see them a little bit out of order, which is actually how they appear on, to me on, um, when I'm on the chicagosummeroflearning.org website. And, and I'll just take a minute to just, um, we can revel in the beauty of these badges because I think they really do a nice job. Again, it's that sense of family. Um, you'll see what we've done here is because this is a kind of a level up badge, we no longer directly reference the, the flag of the city of Chicago, but instead here we write the, the actual word Chicago because these badges are issued directly from the city of Chicago. So um, science here, you can see it's kind of this fun, um, interactive um, art. You can see in the lower right-hand corner is you have two different um, kind of a stylus, or sorry, a pen and also a paintbrush and, and a kind of a ribbon effect. And then engineering has this, this great idea of the, the concept of measurement and pencils and technology is against uh, a laptop. And math is, is doing this really interesting concept of measuring kind of this geometric approach to the letter M. And the graphic that you see, the badge that you see in the upper right-hand corner, um, we came to the concept. So we, we realized we were issuing all these badges. And then we thought, wouldn't it be great to just get a badge because you participated in the city of Chicago um, Summer of Learning? And so we developed a badge that was really a, just a participation badge. So people could say, hey, I, I actually participated in this. Um, and so even if they never earned a city-level badge, they got essentially a badge like this that indicated to them that they had participated in this really wonderful and exciting and groundbreaking program. So um, big ups for the, uh, the recognition badge, the participation badge. And then the one that says the City of Chicago Mayor's Badge is actually a badge that is, um, if you earn all five of these other badges, so if you earn the S, the T, the E, the A, and the M, if you earn those badges, then you actually get a City of Chicago Mayor's Badge, which says, which is kind of a level up to earning the city badges. So I'm talking a lot about um, these badges, but it's really worthwhile talking about how these badges come into being. Like, what's the meaning behind the badges that you've seen so far? And there are really three levels to those badges. So there were what we called entry level badges, and then city level badges, and those are the badges that we were just looking at. So the STEAM badges and then challenge badges. And um, the way that the badge system worked was essentially that you had all these 100 different organizations offering badges, and you could earn them across the entire summer. 
And I'll take a minute to quickly explain, explain what our thinking was behind the entry level badges and the city level badges. And that's really where all of Mozilla did their work. So we did the entry level badges and the city level badges and the challenge badges were then taken under the wing of Digital Youth Network and also the Hive Chicago and Indiana University uh, also had um, another lab that worked, so a game lab that worked with um, their challenges as well. So entry level badges were again issued by those 100 organizations, 100 plus organizations, um, but then there was, after we were looking at all the badges that had been submitted for consideration, we realized timing was a significant issue and that first um, graph that I showed you, first number that I showed you, which was one summer, eight weeks, we wanted to make sure that people could actually get through that process, um, get through the process of leveling up within eight weeks. And we realized that a lot of the entry badges were that were actually issued at the very end of the summer because they involved full length participation, full summer participation in programs. So realizing that, what we did was actually go through and think about how the badges might be weighted. And again, as I mentioned, we had earlier talked about participation badges not counting. And that's part of the reason they didn't count is because we wanted to make sure that people had skills. And what we considered skill badges were badges where you had, um, you participated in a program perhaps under a month. So it was a program that might run a day, it was a program that might run a week, um, but it was definitely no longer than four weeks. Um, and that was considered a skill badge. Then if there were, if you participated in an activity or a program that went six to eight weeks or anything over four weeks, those were really considered achievement badges because they represented that you either had learned multiple skills during that time period or that you were earning skill badges all along and it was to recognize that you had reached a certain level of achievement. It was to acknowledge that it was above and beyond just um, simple skill badges. So those were all happening under the entry level. Um, and so we had the entry level organizations. We also had what we called self-paced activities. And that was to address the fact that, again, as I mentioned, people, we wanted to ensure that kids could actually get through and level up. Um, in order to do that, we developed a series of, actually, I'm sorry, Digital Youth Network developed a series of badges that you could do entirely online. So we also took into consideration that perhaps some kids would have access problems to getting to certain places or getting around the city. The, the self-paced activity badges actually helped us address that. And you could level up relatively quickly in that. Once you did that, you got to um, the next level. And this is, this is a nice graphic by um, Chloe Baraliti that explains how the badges worked. So you earned badges from various programs, either self-paced online activities or a game. It was actually an, a game that's ongoing. I believe it just wrapped up, I think, two weeks ago. And then by earning a combination of them, and the, com and the possibilities were either three skill badges, would, if you earn three skill badges, let's say, in the science realm, then you would earn the city level science badge. Or if you earned one achievement badge and one skill badge in that same realm, so if you were earning one science badge, one science achievement badge and one science skill badge, you would earn the city level science badge. Um, and so that's how you leveled up. You earned three of one type of badge or uh, three of one type of skill badges or one type of achievement badge and one skill badge in, the, in one category. Now here's the interesting twist. Um, as I was going through all the badges, what I found were that a lot of the organizations were offering programs and badges that didn't slot into just one category. They actually slotted into multiple categories. So as you were earning badges, as the students and the youth were earning badges, if they were earning um, most badges, they were earning multiple categories at once. So you could level up in multiple categories at the same time. And that's what is allowing, we actually had a number of people getting the mayor's badge. So they'd actually earned all five of the city level badges. And when that happened, once you earned the city level badges, that actually opened up a series of additional challenges. And those were city-wide challenges that you could then participate in. And they were much more focused along the lines of thinking about um, professional 
possibilities. So it might be one was focused more along the lines of filmmaking, or one was focused more along the lines of graphic design. So it's really starting to focus people like, okay, now you've had this kind of wonderful experience where you, you learned all these different things and they weren't necessarily connected. You had a whole bunch of different pathways. Now we're going to actually start to do a kind of somewhat prescriptive pathways so that you can achieve um, and recognize how those things might connect up. So that's how the actual system worked from a leveling up standpoint. Um, and so I just want to wrap up by saying, so um, I think during some of the time period that we were working, we actually started to question ourselves, like, why climb the mountain? Because Cecil, this Chicago summer of running, was certainly a mountain. Um, and I think it's really because it's there, and it's really, it's a wonderful exemplar, and we are super happy to have been able to work on it. Learned a huge amount um, by working with lots of different organizations, have a much better understanding of what it means to work in an extremely large badge system, um, and also have a better understanding, too, about what it means to be working with organizations who have never badged before and are, are kind of being um, looped into a process um, and swept along with that. So um, that is the Chicago Summer of Learning 2013 badge system design. And I think we'll pass it to Sunny. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yep. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm, maybe, Carla, maybe we should take a cu couple questions just in case people want to talk specifically about um, sure. um, the stuff that you've sure, talked about. Ch chatty. Are there any questions? Quiet group. Ruby and um, Ruby or Cheryl, if there are any questions on chat see or that are happening on um, the webinar chat, please feel free to send them our way. Yeah, I don't Not see seeing any, any right, now. right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'll Cheryl, just go Cheryl, ahead. Wait, wait, wait. Just one Cheryl question from Cheryl. <laughs> Was it a heavy lift to figure out how to categorize the learning? Um, so that's a great question, and thanks for asking it. I would say that in particular, Having those that that primary goal of steam um, was was both a blessing and a curse. It was a blessing in that it actually started to allow us to think about what are the ways that we can immediately start to slot badges into categories. Um, it was a little bit of a curse when we realized that there were lots of organizations who didn't easily fit into that. So um, if there were organizations who were considering if they were addressing things like health or they were addressing things like weight. Um, weight considerations or um, or food, we kind of stuffed them into the science category. Um, and but overall, I'd say that I, that's one of our takeaways, our primary takeaways, which is having a really clear goal about what your system is meant to do helps things. It really helps um, funnel things in and answer a lot of questions when you hit walls. It's kind of like, well, what's the thing that we can do? Okay, recognizing that our goal is to address summer learning drop off, and these are the five categories slotting into it, and that's what we'll do. Um, and then Mary has asked a question What feedback did you get from the kids, and what were the biggest challenges? So that, it's a great question, another great question. Um, I would say that the the we haven't gotten a, a huge amount of feedback yet. Um, I would say that tomorrow there is a summer fair celebrating all of the learning and all of the badge earning that's been happening during the summer. Um, the, I don't know what their biggest challenges are. One of the things we are running into and we are immediately trying to address is recognizing that kids are earning badges that they may not be picking up. So they're getting issued badges, but they may not be picking them up. And I think this is probably a common problem that we'll need to address one way or another. Uh, okay, so Cheryl, I'm sorry, Cheryl, I answered the wrong question there. Um, so, um, so, so I realized it was a different to figure out this learning and participation skills and achievement. Yes, um, we did have a little bit of a rubric. I did have a rubric that I developed to dividing things up to participation skills and achievement. But these are very loose categories, and there were some things that um, didn't necessarily slot into that six to eight week experience for the achievement, but became achievement badges because of the amount of work involved in getting them. 
Um, we also had some really interesting areas where people created badges where they were not necessarily aiming to be issued during the summer. So they wanted to participate, but then they actually had year-long experiences that they were aiming to badge. And um, I didn't mention this, but there were a variety of governmental organizations involved in badging. So things like um, the Chicago Public Schools and the Chicago Public Library and the Chicago Public Parks, they were all involved in badging. So it was a very large range of organizations who could address 50,000 kids or eight kids. So it was a huge range when you were talking about that. And you had to kind of weigh all of this whenever you were thinking about looking at a specific badge. Um, Let's see, along with Mary, I'm curious about the motivation of the kids. Um, so some of that is still ongoing research uh, about finding out which badges, and I haven't really touched on this, and, and I'm not sure we have enough time to really go into this in detail. There were um, some legal considerations about uh, developing a tool for addressing kids under the age of 13, and, we, and Sunny will talk about that in just a second. So the ownership of the data is one of those really interesting areas that um, probably deserves a call unto itself. But it, there was a lot that went back and forth about um, who owned the data, and now the city of Chicago, I believe, is the owner of that data. So a lot of that information will be resident with them as the owners of that data. Will CSOL continue after the summer? Um, another great question. We're really interested in obviously continuing this. Um, because it's the summer of learning, we're not sure exactly whether or not it will continue to 2014. But I will also note that the Chicago Public Schools are actually very much interested in issuing badges. So perhaps if the overall um, group doesn't necessarily continue badging, there are individual organizations who are now committed to badges. Um, and Joanne is curious about the criteria and evidence URLs that people look, what it looked like and what it pointed to. Uh, and thanks for the great job note. Um, I would, so this is something I think is probably worthwhile to have Sunny jump in um, because there, there are tools that actually did look specifically at this kind of um, content, in particularly, in, sorry, in particular addressing the uh, self-paced activity. So and I think I might have kind of answered Cheryl's question. So probably not all 100 of the organizations will continue to badging. But it started uh, kind of a tidal wave, I think. And now that there is commitment, and the commitment was really resident within the government. So the mayor's office really pushed a lot of this. So they, they encouraged many organizations to participate. And so that's the reason that I think we had such a wide range of very large organizations and very small organizations. Um, so Katie's asked a question, did you or the orgs attempt to link criteria to Common Core? That was one of our questions. Does, does your um, assessment or does your badge or does your program address Common Core? And a significant number of them did. So while it's not currently reflected in the criteria, that's something we would love to see as, um, as you know, open badges grows and evolves to see when things are directly related to specific standards. So it was, a, it was something we, we addressed at the very beginning. Um, so how were achievements evaluated? And so for all the organizations, they all the entry-level organizations were responsible for evaluating and assessing all of their, their badges. So Mozilla was really just there as the um, badge system design uh, organization and also technical implementation, but then the programs themselves were run entirely by the organization. So they were responsible for evaluation and assessment. The online activities, so the self-paced activities, were um, evaluated by Digital Youth Network, and Sunny will be able to talk a little bit about how that tool worked in just a few minutes. So I think maybe right now is a good segue. Okay, um, let me pull up my screen. So Carla talked a lot about um, the process that went into designing the badge system for um, a citywide program that enlists 100 plus organizations. Um, we're going to, I'm going to dive into some of the, cool, the tools that we developed to support those badge system um, and to support the issuing of those badge systems, the evaluation of the badge systems, et cetera. So one of the tools that we've um, developed is called, um, 
we, it's badge.chicagosummeroflearning.org. Um, we internally refer to it at, as Open Badger. Some of you might, might be familiar with us having bounced that term around previously. Um, but not to avoid confusion, um, the tool that we developed specifically for Chicago was this badge.chicagosummeroflearning.org. So this is essentially the badge issuing tool that um, the 100 you know, 100 organizations um, that participated in the Chicago Summer of Learning utilized to issue their badges to their community of learners. So this is the interface, this is the login interface um, that you would have, that the, um, the admin instructors for each organization um, could, could, um, could go to. They would have to create a, per they, they had to create a persona account in order to log in, so sign in with your email address. Um, So I, I'm just going to walk you through some of the, the the login experiences and the experiences that we the tools that we built in order to make the badge issuing possible. Um, so persona login, you, you might be familiar with this interface. Um, as an instructor, if you don't have a persona account, you would have had to create one. Um, and then when if you are, for instance, um, from the Art Institute of Chicago and you are granted admin privileges to, to, to utilize badge.chicagosummeroflearning.org, badge then you would see only the list of um, Art Institute of Chicago badges here that are issuable. Um, so these are the three badges that are issuable um, as an admin at the Art Institute of Chicago. And these are the different, the Pathfinder badge, Pops badge, and Think on Your Feet badge. And from then on, I select, if I want to issue the Pathfinder badge, for instance. So these are little, sorry, the, this was supposed to be a PowerPoint presentation, um, intending to be a little bit more animated. Um, but I decided it would probably be better to fold it into a PDF. So sorry for the awkward pace. Um, so select the badge to issue. And then if, I, if there's a little drop down over here, and I have two options, I can issue it or create claim codes. We're gonna first um, go walk through the path of issuing a badge, and then we'll walk through the claim codes for uh, what the claim codes um, path looks like in a little bit. So first, if I wanna issue the Pathfinder badge. When I click on that, then I'll see this screen, and I can list the email addresses to whom I wanna issue the Pathfinder badge here. I can input the earner's email address, and you can enter one of one or many email addresses separated by a line or comma, et cetera. And then I can click issue badges, and that Pathfinder badge will be issued to all those folks that I input here through their email. There's also, if I scroll further down, there's issue a badge with evidence. We also built this feature in. So for instance, um, if I want to um, if, if I held an event and um, the kids produce artifacts associated with that event, like pictures or um, ac actual creations of art or something like that, and I took pictures of those and I want to make sure that that artifact that was created in, a so in relation to that badge is captured with a badge, then I can go ahead, as an instructor, I can go ahead and upload that artifact and then issue it through their email address. So we had an ability for issuer, uh, for instructors to be able to attach evidence associated with the earning of the badge up when, they're, when they're about to issue the badge. So that's the process of issuing the badge. We made it quite simple. It's You just log on, you see the admin interface, for, um, you see the list of badges that you're able to issue. You select either, either issue or claim, and then you input the email address. If there's any evidence associated with the, the earning, um, the issuing of the badge, then you can um, upload the file associated with, with that badge and then go ahead and issue it. Now, um, now we also have um, allowed the ability to claim, um, to issue badges using claim codes. Um, this was, this we found that there were Great, there were great use cases for claim codes, especially for live event type of um, um, instances. So we provided an option, um, claim codes essentially, if, if folks are not familiar, very briefly, this is an example of a claim code. Here's the badge image, and here's the code. 
Plain codes are just unique character strings tied to a particular badge. And you can give it to a badge recipient so that they can go back on, on the site and input it in order to make to claim that badge and indicate that they earned it. So um, this just documents some of the positive um, um, use cases for um, utilizing claim codes. And then let's just do a quick walkthrough. So we encountered this interface earlier. Um, there's a drop down here. If I, if I select the claim codes drop down, um, this is the interface that I get. Um, there's a manual entry of, you know, manual entry of claim codes, and then there's an automatic generation of claim codes. And we recommended that organizations use automatic generations of claim codes so, such that the, algorithmically we create the claim codes for the organization. So I, I inputted three claim codes, and then I called, I named the batch name Test Mozilla, and then I hit generate codes. Generate codes. And then these three codes were generated based upon my request. So these are the numbers. These three numbers are the claim codes that were generated. Um, so now what we, we also enabled, we also provided the capability to export, the, export these claim codes into a printable handout. So over here, apply the action export printable handouts to claim codes in Test Mozilla. And if I go there, then all three of these, these three claim codes that I just created are generated in a printable format with the claim codes right here with some instruction and the badge image that I can then print, print out and then cut out and then distribute for my live event. So th that was another kind of feature that we created for, um, for organizations to easily be able to generate claim codes and then be able to print them out. Um, and then real quickly, we'll just revisit how, how a learner claims a badge. In order to claim a badge, a learner would be either given a URL in an email to go to claim, to, to claim a badge, or they can go to chicagosummeroflearning.org slash claim, and the interface would look something like this. They would input the claim code and then hit claim this badge, and then they'd see the badge appear in their My Badges, um, My badges um, folder. So that so that's the those are some of the things that we built up. This is badges .open, um, Chicago Summer of Learning org, which is kind of an instance of Open Badger that we created um, to help with um, easy badge issuing. And moving on over to um, the assessment tool. Internally, you might have heard us use the term Estemia. Internally, we use. Um, Estemia to refer to this. The Chicago Summer of Learning instance that we created, um, we simply called assess.chicagosummeroflearning.org. Um, this basically is the ability for, um, there, were, there were several sets of badges that were created um, that were intended to be, um, to promote self-paced learning. So, so these, are, these were primarily online activities that were created by Digital Youth Network. So we needed to find a way for youth to be able to um, prove that they um, actually went through the activities, went through the criteria, the requirements of earning the badge, upload evidence associated with it. And in addition to that, we also had to have the ability for the mentors, the assessors, to be able to review the badge applications that came through in an efficient way. So that this, this ba assess, uh, um, Assess, at, um, assess Chicago Summer of Learning.org tool enables um, the assessment um, on behalf of the digital youth network mentors to review these badge applications that are coming in through the self-paced activities. Um, so before we go through the, the assessment tool, let's look at how youth would engage the Chicago Summer of Learning site to apply for badges. So this is, this is an example of a self-paced activity badge. Um, you'll see um, information about this badge, badge criteria, how can you earn it, information on what the youth needs to do about um, how they can go ahead and earn that badge. And then you'll see this apply button. So in order for the youth to start earning this badge, they'll hit the apply button on the chicagosummeroflearning.org site. 
they're taken to the badge, then they're taken to the badge application page. Again, they're reminded of the things that they need to do in order to earn this badge. Um, frequently, they would have to submit, tell us about the work reflections, and then upload evidence associated with the earning of, uh, earning, uh, upload evidence associated with um, the work that they committed. Um, so they do, they, in, they filled this information out, upload evidence, and then they submit it. And the learner has the opportunity to review and edit the application actually before applying. So here's this review, you can, you can review the stuff that you've um, written and uploaded, and then you can go ahead and apply for the badge. After you apply for the badge, you get a confirmation page. Sorry that the badge image is different. This, um, this is supposed to be the other badge. You get a confirmation page, and then this basically goes into the mentor queue. The experience differs whether that, um, from um, the experience differs for a learner that's under 13 as opposed to a learner that's over 13. Um, a badge application for, um, that went through for a child under 13, the, a notification is first sent to the parent. And then um, the badge application for a um, somebody over 13 who, who applies for a badge, then that immediately goes to the mentor queue. Carla referred to some of the, um, the COPPA work that we needed to do um, as part of Chicago Summer of Learning, and this was a big part of it. Um, there, we needed to create um, a pretty detailed notification system um, in which the parents were always kind of in between, um, in between what um, the work that was being, they were the, essentially the gatekeeper between the learner and the system. So that that was a big learning experience for us as well. So how to assess badge applications once a learner has applied for a badge? Now this is the tool, the assessment tool that we were I was referring to earlier. Once the once the learner has gone through the Chicago Summer of Learning site and has gone through the process of applying for the badge, this is where the, the, that badge application now is in a queue. This is where the mentors, the assessors go to in order to go through those badge applications that, ha that are accumulating. Um, the assessor um, is granted a login. Again, login is using, through using Persona. Once they go through Persona, they see the list of badges that need reviewing by the mentors. If you see, here's a brief close-up. You'll see that there are STEAM, they're cat tagged with STEAM categories. There's some basic information associated with it. There's, if I go ahead and hit review from at this point, then I can see the badge application. The, so the badge applications differ depending on whether the, the learner is over or under 13. If the learner is over 13, then they see the badge image, the evidence associated with it, the rubrics, and this is where the mentor can mentor types in their response, um, their evaluation. And if the learner is over 13, they can type whatever they want in here. It's free text. However, if the learner is under 13, the badge application looks largely similar. The badge, in, the badge image, evidence, evidence that, the, that was submitted, the rubrics as a reminder to the assessor, um, to, to they, they, the, these are the rubrics that the mentor needs to um, evaluate the evidence against. But the response is not free form text. It's a canned response. These are um, pre, predetermined um, messages that we've created for the mentor for under 13 users. Um, and again, this is our intent, this is, um, in consultation with um, our legal folks in order to abide by COPPA guidelines. So under 13 users do not get free form text from um, mentors. They, the mentors have to select um, a pre can message. And then they go ahead and submit it and then that work, oops, and then the mentor goes ahead and submits their assessment and then if they're over, if the child is over 13, the child gets that assessment back. And then if the child is under 13, then the parent gets a notification 
that the assessment has been completed and whether they, their child has been awarded a badge or not. So that's basically our assessment tool that we created. It's pretty simple. Um, I want to see, I, we're at, we have, I think, nine minutes left, so I want to see if we have any questions. Let's, I'll, go to, I'll go over to chat see. Any questions? It looks like audio cut out for me. Sorry about that. Let's see. Hey, Sunny, I think that was intermittent because it, um, you, I heard you the whole time. Oh, good. Let's see. Um, where should I start? Um, Michelle, what it, did do they want the badge or did they just want the experience or was the fact that they signed up at all indicative of their commitment? I'm thinking of those eager earners and those who just lurk on websites. What do you so think, I think um, I think that in responding to this, again, we don't have all the data because it, the, that information is not resident on our servers and if it were, that still wouldn't be the kind of thing that we track just because of who we are as Mozilla. But I think that um, it's a really interesting question from the standpoint that um, many of the programs were kind of pre-signed up. So you had to have signed up for them in advance because they had been ongoing programs for a long time. And there were, as I mentioned, a variety of different organizations kind of all over the city. And we haven't necessarily tracked um, badges per organization yet because a lot as I mentioned earlier many of the organizations were issuing badges at the very end of the summer so it's possible that there are badges being earned that we won't know about until let's say um, the end of August yep um, let's see Katie Davis asks, did students apply for badges in the same way for the program issued badges as for the self-paced badges? It was a little, um, for the self-paced badges, um, that went through the whole thing that I just walked through um, when I was talking about the assessment tool. Um, it was all online. But um, the badge application process for the other programs, the non-self-paced activities, were, were it ranged. It, it was dependent on the, the learning content, the activity, how the organization structured um, their learning activity, um, so it was completely dependent upon um, each organization. Um, Cheryl's question is, can people from other cities earn any of these badges through the online activities? Yes, they can. There's nothing stopping them from um, engaging in any of the self-paced activities available on chicagosummerlearning.org. I think it's just a matter of knowing that those are ongoing and you'd have to find them. Yep. Any other questions? Um, Cindy, I wonder if you want to talk just briefly about the idea of the way that the backpack worked as opposed to... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, as many of you guys, you guys, many of you are already familiar with the Mozilla backpack that's um, that's available to us all. For Chicago, we had to create um, an, a, a, a separate instance of the backpack, again, due, largely due to COPPA. Um, the current existing Mozilla backpack does not support kids under 13. So we had to create um, another instance of it that was able to, that was, again, um, that was still, again, bifurcated for um, depending on whether you were over 13 or under 13. So for over 13 kids, the backpack looks pretty similar to what we have currently with all the share features and everything. But the under 13 backpack um, left, the under 13 backpack was pretty much just a place from which um, the learner could hold their badges. It was stripped of any kind of share features um, and, and this was, and the bifurcation obviously was done, the Chicago Summer of Learning Center, in, in order to sign up, you had to input your date of birth, and based on that information, we knew whether to, whether the kid was under 13 or not, and we knew which kind of backpack offering, um, depending on that date of birth. So, again, like, COPPA was a strong consideration for us 
for many of the experiences that we built. Um, for the assessment tool that we built, for badge application process that we built, the backpack experience that we built, we completely understand that um, the pain that some of you may have already been go going through in order to accommodate um, learning for youth under 13. Um, Mary has a question. Did you provide mentor training and use? Yep, we did. We, we provide provided several training sessions for organizations. Um, those decks that I shared with you, um, you know, the, they, they are as detailed as they are because they were intended to stand on their own. I, um, Cheryl asked if I can link to them. I'd be happy to um, provide links to them. We, those were provided as resources to, to the mentors who were assessing badge applications and to organizations who were issuing, issuing badges to their learning communities. Any other questions? Will the under 13 backpack be made available for other orgs to use? That's a really great quick question, Lucy. So, um, all of our code base is currently available, um, but at this, what we're trying to work on for the next coming months is to, we have all this code um, that obviously is open for any of you guys to use right this moment in time, at this moment in time, but we want to clean it up. We want to modularize it and make it cleaner and neater for folks to easily be able to take um, and, and take what they need very easily. Right now, it's it needs to be cleaned up, it needs to be modularized so that it could be more easy to use for you guys. Um, the intention is for, you, um, for, the, for everybody to be able to utilize the code work that we've put in place. So yes, but we need to, we need to work on it to make it easier for you guys to take it. Um, Mary's asking, did you get a large number of logins this summer? I think Carla, um, do you have the number off the top of your head? Uh, I do not have the number off the top of my head. I, it was it was pretty massive, though. I, I think we got excellent, excellent response, um, considering it was, again, it was the first time a city had decided to institute anything of this magnitude. And it is the first in, um, instance. And because it's that, I think it's, and it, to a certain degree, I, I look at it a little bit like um, direct mail. I know that's an odd analogy. But uh, I think because it's a relatively new concept and it requires um, technical um, access, there was a lot of concern about whether or not kids would have technical access. And that's part of the reason it was really important for us to have um, a good relationship with the Chicago Public Library because that was actually an access point for many different kids around the city of Chicago. So um, I, I would say that's something that we can provide as a follow-up, that number. We are um, close to the hour. Um, if, are there any additional questions? Do you have any sense of whether the badges will have any sort of life recognition when kids go back to school? So I'll jump into that one. Um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There were some organizations who were issuing badges, and DeVry University is one of them, that was specifically addressing that kids could be in high school and they could be earning community college or college credit at the same time. And the goal there for even, even though we were aiming at summer learning drop off, there were also kind of secondary and tertiary goals, which was these badges need to have some meaning in the real world aside from just earning them during the summer and providing personal agency. And linking directly to jobs was one of them and having them be used as reference points for any kind of school is also one of them. And while I mentioned Chicago Public Schools, um, just briefly, their goal is to also start to, to think about how badges might work from, so start to, starting to acknowledge out of school learning in, in, in school environments, so absolutely. Um, so we are at 11 o'clock, and I know Sunny and I both actually have to jump on another call, but thank you so much for um, listening to all of our discussions, and if you have additional questions, please drop them into the Google group. We're happy to continue the conversation, and if you haven't ha yet had a chance to join one of our community calls on Wednesdays at 9 Pacific um, noon 
Eastern, please go ahead and do so. And thanks so much. And thanks so much for Haystack for helping us with this tool, with this webinar. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Haystack. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. We'll post this on YouTube um, in a few days.